Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today, we are talking about a tool called Gestalter. Now, this is basically the Swiss Army knife for dealing with GLTF files. It's essentially an editor and viewer, but it's kind of underselling what it's all about. And in order to understand the value of Gestalter, you probably have to understand the value of the GLTF format. Now, GLTF is a 3D interchange format. I believe it was originally created for WebGL. It's from uh, the Kronos group, the people behind Vulkan and OpenGL, and it is a non-proprietary open 3D interchange format. It's being used more and more by game engines such as Godot or 3D content tools such as Blender. Hopefully this is the future of real-time game data files. So we can move away from something proprietary like FBX and get working with something more open and inclusive. The nice thing about Gestalter is this enables us to get in there and really debug what these files are all about. So if you've exported out from Blender and you've imported it into your game engine, it doesn't look right. Gestalter could be the perfect tool for figuring things out. On top of that, you can actually even use this to compose and edit GLTF files as well. So you see here, there are a couple of versions available. There's a community version and then the pro version, which has a 30-day evaluation. I believe it basically breaks down to non-commercial versus commercial usage. I actually couldn't find any documentation on this fact whatsoever. So I am not 100% certain. I'm using the evaluation version in this particular case, but I think community version is the same thing. It's just you've got to use it in a non-commercial setting. So it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It specifically says Ubuntu, but I imagine it works on multiple Linux versions. You can view files, inspect files, and edit files, compose files, and optimize files. Uh, it's going to be open beta. It's supposed to launch the end of Q2 2020, which, uh, yeah, that already happened. So I don't know what the deal is there. It's also going to get things like uh, import options for additional file formats, uh, third-party IO, including integration into Sketchfab, which is where I got the examples from we're going to test out today. All right, that is enough backstory. If you want to check it out, it is available at gestalter.io. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below. Let's go take a look at it. So here we are. When you first fire it up, it looks like this. Right mouse button to do um, orbit and then you can use WASD keys to navigate around. And again, Q and E for up and down. Here is your typical scene. You can see here, you've got a material probe, you've got the main camera, and you've got the lighting rigs. Anything here, you can go ahead, expand and connect and select from. So here there's a red point light interacting with the world. And as you can see, you can actually come in here and tweak it. So here is the light, point light red. I could come down here to the lights available, point light red, and we could change that. So instead of we want it point light red, we could make it point light pink. Where's pink? Ah, there we go. So now we have a pink light and the immediate effect it had in the scenes. I was actually blocking our renderer. So you can actually see as we are editing the light, especially if you look in that crevice right there, the power of what we are doing. The same thing, you can also change out the, the intensity, for example, of the light and so on and the range. Etc. So you've got real-time control over all the items in your scene. So you've got, for example, come down here. Here's all the various different nodes. So here is the pedestal in our scene. We can come down here. We can move things around and edit using uh, the controls right there. Oddly enough, this pivot is often not uh, where I would expect it to be. I'm not sure what is controlling that. Uh, but you could use the standard QWERTY keys to scale, rotate, move, and select up at the top here. If you've got animations, you can see animations. You've also got the option of switching over here into the render view mode if you so wish. Now, the nice thing here is I tested this with a couple of downloaded examples. So here, for example, I pulled Lilith off of, um, this is not my work at all. This came off of Sketchfab. But here you can see a non-simple example uh, in effect. So why do I know? Oh, I'm in render mode still. All right, edit mode. All right, so here we go. Zoom in, take a look. So let's say we didn't want these guys down here. So we got this group here of characters down there. If we want to change out an editor file, boom, I just did. So here is our character. We could grab any individual aspect of this character. For example, if I wanted to compose the scene and change things up, I can actually right click and let's do a duplicate. All right, so now we have this tree and this tree. So what I could do is I could take that one, for example, and let's move it. So now we've got two of her. And you can actually do full composition up here. So you can create a new node, new cameras, new lights, new materials, and so on. Let's go ahead and create a light. So come down here to the light section, right click, create. We got a new light. We could make it of various different kinds, point, spot, and directional. So we'll make that a directional light. We'll make it, yeah, so we'll make it kind of a gray. All right, we're good there. We can set its intensity to, say, 5 all right, so we now have a light. We'll go back to an object in our scene. We can apply that light to it. And then boom, you see the end result of that light we just created. So we can come on back here. Let's say our intensity is a little too low. So we could make this 
25. So now we have a whole lot of intensity on that light. And that is the gist of what you are doing with Gestalter. So you can come in here, you can really kind of look at your scene, your, your GLTF files as you're working with. You can go through and control all aspects of it. So here we got the materials or textures that go ahead to handle this, this girl. So we got here, I could go navigate to that material. Well, we can look at, so let's go here to a material, look at an individual material. We can see the things that go together to make it. So there we can see the textures that are controlling it. Uh, you can see all of the, the things that are settable, the sampler involved in it. So I could go back again here to a material and we've got control over on the material. So if we wanna have one of these materials be emissive, start giving off lights, have clear coat specular sheen, whatever. If we wanna tweak any of the materials in our scenes, we can tweak all of those values right here. So you got fine tuned control over your textures. Uh, you got control over your mesh. Now, kind of weird because this model has called their meshes material which is a little confusing uh, but you got access over here I believe in the future we're going to have a little bit more detail or control over what we can add in here right now because it looks like right now it's just image files but you should be able to bring in uh, additional 3d objects compose them and so on so what I could do at any particular times so I could come down here I could create myself a new scene we'll switch to that scene right there and then we can start adding nodes in from our so individual piece we could bring that in and start composing our own 3d scenes from scratch once you've got something that you like basically you can go ahead and do a save dump it out as another gltf file in that or glb format or in their own proprietary format and go from there so this is not a 3d modeler by any stretch of the word but if you say do your game levels in gltf formats and you want to make a tweak to it or you want to add a light or you want to move some meshes or you want to create a couple new instances or uh, anything like that you can easily use a tool like just alter to go ahead and make those changes so i could really see people using this to you could grab um, an existing product off of something like sketchfab which again is going to have integration at some point in the future and you could bring in these other projects and then um tweak them or, or make sure that they work right or so on so when you're bringing something in or when you're doing an import for example into another engine you may find oh, wait a minute here something didn't work right here's a good example this one has these um this is another thing off sketchfab you can see here it's a really kind of a cool level detail and again the renderer is doing a, a great job this is basically one for one of um what it looks like on uh, the Sketchfab where I downloaded, but we've got we've got these guys that are showing up a little bit incorrectly. We can fix that, and we can diagnose what the problem is here using uh, just alter. So really cool tool. Now, is it ultimately going to be worth the price tag? That's hard to say. Obviously, the community version is going to be invaluable. So if you're not working on a commercial project, this one is a no-brainer. If you're working with GLTF files, you need to debug or tweak or change things. Check out Just Alter. Definitely worth uh, a look for sure. It's one of the best viewers I have seen in a long time. And again, debugging the process of you know exporting 3D models can always be a bit of a pain. So any tool that makes it easier, I appreciate it in my book. So anyways, Just Alter, check it out. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.